Number nine, Mia Yasutano. Number 26, Kitty Garrett. And then goal for the Cougars, number 91, Kelly Burner. Cougars are coached by Caitlin Layton. Priestess, are you ready? Let's meet our Lady Streets. Number two, Shibby Vitale. Number three, Haley Hoffman. Number four, Sarah Salomon. Number eight, Jess Pulaski. Number 16, Riley Rankin. Number 21, Gabby Fama. Number 22, Holly Orr. Number 23, Maddie Summit. Number 24, Gianna Sioni. Number 37, Maddie Moreno. And in goal for the street, number 82, Nikki White. Here's the coach for Coach Potter, Eric Schiff. Good evening and welcome to Washington, New Jersey for a quarterfinal matchup in the NJSIAA North Jersey Group 3 field hockey tournament. This should be a blast here between two double-digit win squads in the Warren Hills Blue Streaks and the Chatham Cougars. My name is Zach Smolin, here to take you through all the action right here on More Sussex Sports. An extra thank you to the Warren Hills AD, Mike Jones, for making this all possible. And, of course, our producer, Jake Gallagher, and Nick Berry, our camera operator. So the blue streaks are going to be over on your right in white and navy blue and on the deeper blue on the left side with the blue as the primary color of their jersey, you will see the Chatham Cougars. Chatham are on a six-game winning streak. They've been utterly dominant in their past couple of weeks or so of play and will look to continue that. They are the Morris County tour uh, Tournament champions as they beat Randolph back on October 19th to win their first field hockey championship, or Morris County Tournament, I should say, in about a decade. As now the number two-seeded Blue Streaks are trying to chip something in. They pop one up, and it goes over out and into the end zone of the football territory. So we will see an early... Oh, no, I thought we'd see a corner from the Blue Streaks. Instead, they're going to take it from up top. So touch it now is Haley Hoffman, the sophomore midfielder, looking for some space. Instead, attempts to split the defenders, and off the wrist, it's tapped right ahead. Now attempting to get it towards the middle, and, oh, they call something else for a possession change, it's looking like. Or no, corner coming up for Warren Hills. Warren Hills on the season, the number two seed in this tournament. 14-5-1, 4-3-1 in the Skyland Conference. They're second in the Raritan Division with 47 goals and 38 goals allowed. 
That is plus nine on the differentials. This corner goes a bit wide to the top. And instead, they're going to take it over from that yellow line. Or, or not. Or they'll just send it back over there behind the goal. All right. So taking it here is going to be Sarah Salome, or Salome, the sophomore, one of the top scorers on this team as she placates it up top to Maddie Summit. Summit working her way around the defense, and it's cleared out and away by Kelsey Lee, the junior defender for the Chatham Cougars. So right now, Chatham playing on their heels a bit, which is not something that we're used to seeing out of this Cougar squad. Again, have won six contests in a row, dating back to October 16th when they beat Wes Morris in the semifinal round of the Morris County Tournament. They've also taken out Randolph, Roxbury, Sparta, Mount Olive, and Morristown, only giving up more than one goal on that October 27th contest against the Marauders, where they won that game 4-3. to three. That was a tight contest against a... Mount Olive squad that were ranked 10th in this tournament. So looking to make something happen against the Blue Streaks as this is kicked away by starting netminder Kelly Burnich. So Fama with 9.53 left in the first quarter. And is able to drive one right in and score. And put them on the board. And for Fama, that's her first goal of the season. First points of the season. And it comes at a big time for this squad as they put them up ahead one to nothing and an ever important, you know, sudden death in this bracket style tournament. This big game towards the end of the fall season. Finally starting to feel like autumn out here on the field after a pretty toasty October. Definitely have the crisp air out here and are surrounded by these hills of Warren County. So now Chatham starting to take control in midfield again. We haven't seen them at all really beyond that 40-yard line on the field that's been all blue streaks as they've had constant control over on the left side of your screen. Now racing towards it is Riley Reagan, and she forces it out there, so it'll be Chatham possession. And as usual, when it's on that far side of the screen, it's Emmy Chazen lasering it in. The pass, though, is taken away by Maddie Moreno, and back out for Chazen. Now Chazen slaps one over towards the sideline, keeping it along the end, now towards the center, but it's knocked down by Summit, who's playing back there on defense. Holly Ort is back there as well, challenging and chipping that one ahead, but easily handled by Chatham. And kicked forward by Engelkraut, and now it'll be taken over to the other side. Nice plays in transition after that deep pass, but it's taken over at midfield by Chatham and rifled back over into their offensive territory. Well, they just can't keep, uh, seem to sustain much of anything now as Moreno's going to grab it again. One of the bigger players back there on defense. They have a very experienced back line. All upperclassmen, three juniors and one senior, although one is out in Emily Dvorsky, so they'll be devoid of her excellent play and her leadership as well. Now carving through with Salome and has her pocket picked as it's taken out by Kelsey Lee. And Chatham will get possession over around that 15-yard line. About halfway through quarter number one here in Washington, New Jersey. Just getting started here in this quarterfinal matchup between the number two-seeded Blue Streaks and the number seven-seeded Chatham Cougars. As we look through the bracket, there has yet to be an uh, – oh, there's just been one upset so far. Wayne Valley beating Colts Neck on the 27th by a score of 2-1. to one. They'll be taking on Randolph today. And that game already – or coming to a close sometime soon. And the winner of this game will take on the winner of that Wayne Valley Randolph matchup. It's now already the, I believe this is the fourth corner for the Blue Streaks. And each and every time it's been handled by Salome, they have yet to score off of this set play. They send it toward the middle, looking for Summit. Summit taps it over to the side, a wind up in the shot, and a kick save, and kicked away again by Kelly Burnich. So Burnich playing well between the pipes and able to handle that shot. And as we'll see, yet another corner. 0 for 4 so far on these attempts are the Blue Streaks. As the majority of the defense having to go back towards midfield for the Cougars. Once again, that set play to Summit, this time tapping it over to her right side. Looking more towards the middle to try to get it to Summit again. It's unable to complete it. And the tenacious defense by the Cougars led by Kelsey Lee, able to help get the job done in. 
hold Warren Hills to 0 for 5 on those corners. So now back up top, driven in and stopped cold by Reagan. She's going to try to turn it around, but now in transition come the Cougars. And an attempt to pass up the sideline goes a little long, so Brooke DeBase will see that go under her stick and back out of bounds as that rolls almost all the way over to the track. Nice sized crowd here for this quarterfinal round, and quite a few people traveled from Chatham. We see a good congregation over there on the opposite side of the field as that one was knocked out of the air by McManus. And she's going to be able to maintain possession, though, having to carve her way around a pair of blue streaks. Now knocking it towards the sideline. Warren Hills able to advance it over in their defensive end, still keeping it towards the middle of the field, challenging her as Kitty Garrett, and taps it away, but still in possession of the blue streaks. Now around midfield. It's good to see Chatham being a little bit more aggressive this time around. Instead of hanging back, they were pretty passive over in the first five minutes or so of this game, and they're now starting to make something happen offensively. This is a high-scoring team. As we mentioned, the 43 goals on the year. Now here they come towards the middle. A shot and a nice chip pass over to the side. It's collected over towards the middle, loose in front of the net, and it's knocked out of there by Warren Hills. A good play for them, but a corner coming up for Chatham, their first of the contest. And the Cougars will set their out-of-bounds specialist, Emmy Chazen. Out there in the middle is Kate McManus. So let's see if they go to her first. They have a couple of set plays off the corner in their back pocket as they race it more over towards that left side. A big shot goes through and over beyond the track, wide of the post. So Chatham now 0 for 1 on the set play, and we'll see the ball go the other direction. Constant running clock here, so already just 4.15 left in quarter number one as this is drilled forward. And let's see if it stays in. No, it doesn't. Essentially a punt play that time for the Blue Streaks, just getting it out of the zone and forcing Chatham to try to work it out the other direction. So now McManus with it. A couple of defenders around her being challenged now by Moreno. Moreno forcing her to turn around as she chips it ahead to her teammate. And it's tapped away by Holly Ort. One of the many seniors on this squad, they're really going to be leaning on her today, especially without Emily Dvorsky. Now back towards the 20, bouncing ball. And attempting to chop it away that time was Chazen. But ultimately losing it and working in transition again is Haley Hoffman, the sophomore midfielder. The, or rather, the Warren Hills Blue Streaks are also a high-octane offense. They like to run their team through Sarah Salome and Maddie Summit, both with 16-plus goals on the year. Salome with 16 goals, 7 assists, and Summit with 17 goals and 7 assists. Nobody else on the team has more than 7 goals. And that's Gianna Sioni, another sophomore. Sixth corner of the game coming up for Warren Hills. They have not scored on any of them. And they're a touch under three minutes left in this first quarter as they send it over to the opposite side, back on top of the arc. Batting it over from side to side in the field and the shot is blocked. Now still staying in front and a good effort. I believe that was Garrett to get over there and interfere with those shot opportunities. Now Salome works herself right around Lapis. And the tap forward again, mishandled by Chatham, and will be taken slowly but surely by Salome. Still outside that arc, moves it over to the top. Now to Sai. Over towards the middle and taken out. So the Cougars will take it with two minutes left to go in quarter number one. Arcing pass again taken away. Now this does not look like the Chatham that I saw when we were covering their game against Sparta, more Sussex Sports, about eight days ago, they had a lot of crisp passing, dominated the possession the entire game, but they're certainly meeting quite the challenger as this one's knocked through beyond the netminder and is sent home. Doubling the lead are the Blue Streaks with another nice offensive play, and they now lead it two to nothing. And that is Jess Pulowski. 
sending one in. That's her second goal of the season. Up to now five points on the year, and the Blue Streaks have done what not many teams have been able to do against Chatham this year and score more than once. And as the last time that happened was back in their last tournament game, four to three, but again, the majority of these te are these games, in five of six games, Chatham has allowed one or fewer goals, including a shutout against West Morris in the semifinal round of the Morris County Tournament. Now Chatham again working aggressively, this time up the near sideline. And again, tapped away by Warren Hills. This Josie Potter squad is just bent but not broken on defense. They're letting Chatham get a few possessions in. And then ultimately, Chatham with some sloppy passing. And the Blue Streaks is able to take advantage and work it again over to the left in transition. And now another nice defensive play, this time by Reagan. Reagan's been great in the midfield today. Getting in front of a lot of passes, working that sideline well, and making it difficult for this team to work their way up the field as now a chip attempt by Sophia Claps is stopped cold, and here come the streaks again on the near side sideline. Tapped in the air by Lapis. She drills it forward. She finds her player, Schiacitano, and rolls it over toward the sideline. Overplayed that ball a little bit as Brooke DiBiase will chip it and roll it right back up top. All right, so out on the play, and they attempt to put the ball towards the net. Backs off of that tire in that backside corner. So they had some shots, but not quite on goal. And that's how we'll end quarter number one, two to nothing. The Blue Streaks lead it, and they looked utterly dominant this entire contest. We'll give you quarter number two when we come back right here on Morris Essex Sports. Reset, and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh! in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, look for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score. And that is a base hit, the run will score. And Freshman, pull the check, gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is gonna make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three, he got it! Ah Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda. Back in action here. Quarter number two between the number two seeded Blue Streaks and the number seven seeded Chatham Cougars. As Warren Hills are really jumping out to a big lead. They last scored, the high scoring game that they've had in recent memory was a four to one victory at Voorhees. And that's the most that they've scored in the last month or so, before that, they had back-to-back four-plus goal games. One was at Pingree, and the other one was against Ridge High School. That was 4-2 to two and 5-4 to four victories, but have been kept at a minimum as of late. Good to see their offense up and running, especially with two of their high-octane players trying to get the job done. As now this is batted over towards the sideline, and... Going to be taken by Sarah Salome yet again. Salome working her way around McManus, keeping it along that baseline. And McManus again getting her stick down and blocking it in front, but now Chatham will have it as they'll take it out of there. 
Well, the Cougars' backline defense actually hasn't been too bad. They've just struggled with their passing in the midfield and in, with their forwards as well. They can't get the ball to their scorers, and that's been the big issue for them. I don't even think that Sydney White on the right side has a save today. She hasn't had to do too much. So now Chatham have it. They're going to work it through McManus. McManus with a good lift pass. It's knocked out of the air and sent down by Avery Dunn. Or my mistake, that's not Dunn, that's Moreno. Well, so far, Chatham looking a lot better in this second quarter than we saw them in quarter number one, where they sent the, spent the first five minutes or so just taking shot after shot with three different corners going through. I believe there were a couple in a row as well. So they're looking good as now another call goes over towards Chatham's way and you can hear some of the disdain coming from the fans here just below us. Two to nothing, Warren Hills up on Chatham in this quarterfinal round of the NJSIAA North Jersey Group 3 tournament. And the winner of this game will take on the victor of Wayne Valley and Randolph. And actually, I'll try to see if we got a score in that game. I'll have to check it later on. As now sent ahead this time by Ellie Hilgendorf. We haven't gotten to say her name too often. As Chatham now with a good opportunity, they'll have possession over inside that 25 yard line. Or rather over on the 35 as they pushed it back. Side to side passing, Chick back, uh, back ahead by McManus and stolen yet again by the Blue Streaks. Again, their defense has been the name of this game. Haley Hoffman, the midfielder, just playing sideline to sideline and getting in the way of anything the Cougars try to do offensively. They only have one corner in today's game. And they did get the pass complete, but not really a shot off as they look a little disorganized and disoriented offensively. Now bouncing ball goes over and under the stick of Lee. As she tries to cut her way through and have the sideline be her friend as another barrier, again snatched away by Warren Hills. And it's been those turnovers with possession that have hurt the Cougars in today's game. They've had the ball, but when they've been challenged by even just one defender, they've been essentially just giving that ball away. As now that pass too slow as they're looking for Sophia Claps. And now good opportunity coming up for Sione. Sione passes it towards the middle and it's still there. As they slow it down and another corner coming up for the streaks. So Sione was working it over from that shooting area and then it was stopped in the middle. So we'll get to see Sarah Salome work it again. So Salome stretching it out. Getting it to Summit but it chips off her stick. Now over towards the back, they find Summit again inside the shooting area. Off the end of her stick, still carrying it and blocked. On the legs that time by Burnich, another save for her today. And now this shot is blocked by Salome, accidentally went off her shin guard. If they would've got the deflection in, they could be up by three, but yeah, sometimes the ball just don't lie there. They weren't meant to have that one. Third of the way in here in quarter number two. So far the Number two seeded home squad, the big advantage in today's game. Some mighty ducks action, pop, uh, popping it off that blade of the stick. And now sent ahead, but again, another pass that's just a little too aggressive coming from the Cougars. You want to be uh, aggressive on offense, but they need to get a bit more under control. I have not seen them with consecutive completed passes in this game. Now they're trying to work it on the sideline, but just unable to get around Maddie Moreno. It's been a brick wall over there. As a back in today's contest. Now McManus cutting her way around Hoffman. And is able to get that feed complete through the middle, but again taken out by Holly Ort, the senior back player. It seems like every time Chatham get a nice rush off on the other end, they're just stopped cold and can't get anything done as now an attempted swat towards the middle is again interfered with by Ort and she's just gonna send it right out of bounds and give her defense a chance to take a breather here. 
Now a touch under nine minutes left to go. They've added over towards the side. And McManus caught in between a pair of streaks, and the streaks will take it the other way after it was touched down by the Cougars. North Hunterdon have already advanced. They shut out Summit four to nothing. That was the eighth seed, and they'll play now Friday against the winner of Lawrence and Northern Heights, the five and four seeds respectively. Again, only one upset in this tournament came in the first round. Wayne Valley two to one up on Colts Neck. And North Hunterdon's been a difficult team. For Warren Hills as they lost to them three to two back on September 30th. And then in the Hunterdon Wars and Sussex tournament, three to one, that was back on October 16th. But both of those top seeds coming out of this Raritan division, so it really shows you just how good the Blue Streaks have been this year. They've earned all 14 of those victories that they've had. So now again, the Streaks in control at midfield. And Liza Holberton, first time we've said her name, getting involved, she's got the pink headband. And now hustling toward the other side as Olivia Hopek. Well, let's tap it back over to her midfield. Now Moreno just sends it across to Hoffman. Hoffman getting around one player, no, taken away by Holberton. Now Holberton gets stopped by Hoffman as she taps it over towards the sideline, still maintaining possession of the Cougars, but it's bumped away. And now Salome taps it over to uh, Shivy Desai, the freshman back. And Desai's looked good over on that left side despite some of her inexperience here on the team. But again, if you're gonna have a competitive team, it's gotta be a good mix of veterans and young players stepping up, and that's what Warren Hills have gotten out of their group this year. Certainly a group for Josie Potter to be proud of. As again, I pass over towards the side to Riley Reagan. And this one goes just a bit long as they're unable to stop it there. Just Pulaski was trying to streak over and pick that one up. Now another blast over back towards the defense. Ort stops it. She's got some options to either side and decides to take it herself as she's strafing around Brooke DiBiase. Now DiBiase takes it away and can't get it done around the arc as Moreno right there to put a stop to any of those shenanigans. Under six minutes left to go here in the first half. Two nothing streaks. And they did score at the very end of quarter number one, as well as more towards the beginning. So might be looking to grab some momentum, but Chatham at least looking to make a dent before the half. Now this one batted in, it's stopped by DiBiase. DiBiase escorts it back behind her, behind the back pass. Working it through is the Caesar, and she has her attempt kicked away. Well, Chatham able to penetrate the deepest levels of the Streaks defense, but now in transition, the Streaks are coming up ahead. Here comes Summit. Summit, the leading scorer on this team. So has 17 goals, now they have it through Burnett, just trying to find a good spot and kicks one away. As Blake Carroll attempting to escape with the ball, but Summit with other ideas inside that shooting area. Now tips it over to the side, and Burnich again with another stop. As Kelly Burnich has almost single-handedly kept her squad in this game with a couple of nice saves there. There's been a loose ball in front of her plenty of times today, but has been able to just bat it right out of there. And the two goals against her, not much she could do. The defense just breaking down in front of her. And Warren Hill's taking advantage. Actually, Chatham are very lucky. There's a universe in which they're down three nothing in this game off a penalty shot that looked like it rung off the top shelf, but the officiating crew thought that they saw it go off the crossbar and out. As the score stands, two nothing. And the streaks still playing quite aggressively with the ball. They're not satisfied with a two goal lead here. They're looking for more. As Hoffman attempting to take it through center field. Now across that yellow line on the 25 yard line with the football markings. Hoffman drives one and kicked by Burnich. Now back over by Hoffman. And goes inside the arc and rolls it through. 
Another corner coming up for the streaks. You can really hear the energy coming from the crowd behind her. The Blue Streaks faithful out in full force here today. Right across the street from Warren Hills High School here in Washington, New Jersey. Of course, a big thank you to their athletic director, Mike Jones, for having us here and helping us bring you this broadcast on more Sussex Sports. As Summon off the corner, weaves her way around two defenders, the shot, and it's tipped over towards the side, and we'll stop it right there. A nice attempt, though, by the senior forward. She's looking to cap off her final season here with a deep run in the state championship playoffs. Now they work it to Hoffman. Hoffman with one in front has it blocked as a Kitty Garrett able to get herself in the way. Now they're working it towards midfield. Nice spin move by DiBiase, just trying to maintain possession as they have under three minutes to go and try to make something happen before the conclusion of the first half. Hoffman again playing a great midfield. And they attempt to force it to Summit. Summit comes out with it, but fortunately moving in the different direction that the Blue Streaks were hoping. And it's taken out by Chatham. Chatham have to clean up their passing if they want to get competitive in this contest. As here comes DiBiase. Nice chip pass over to her left. And ooh, a whiff on that attempt by Holburton. Couldn't maintain possession that time, and the Blue Streaks again will control it at midfield. Uh, they keep that pass on the ground to Paul, uh, Pulaski. And after the whistle, it'll keep going the Blue Streaks way. Pass towards the middle, chipped off of the stick by Fama. And now Summit with it again. She's had the ball a ton today, and, and that's what you want to do, just keep the ball in possession of your best scorer. As they'll have yet another corner opportunity to try to drive one home and make this a three to nothing lead. We, you credit Chatham. In quarter number two here, their defense has certainly stepped up their game. Their offense has looked better over on the right side of your screen, but again, just very little time spent in that offensive zone. And superior passing by the Blue Streaks has been an advantage. As now they chip it over towards that side, they keep it in. And now a forced pass there by Moreno. Didn't have a lot of options as Chatham will take it the other direction. Just over a minute left to go. The Streaks now sending it over towards that 25. And here's a chip shot, it's taken away and rolls just over back behind that left leg of Burnage. Another dangerous situation though for the Cougars that they were lucky to get out of there. Now on the top, tapped over to that far side of the screen as Reagan's got it over towards the sideline. Chatham just trying to get it out of there and escape in the first half, just only being down by two. And as they'll have enough time for perhaps one quick offensive rush if they can make it happen, but that's not a way to get it done as they rattle that out of bounds. As it'll be taken by Reagan. And now Reagan has it batted away. Again, just under 15 seconds left to go. Not much time for Chatham to make anything happen as they'll place it down over on that 30 yard line. Only an opportunity to maybe just drill one over to the other end instead. She'll just let the clock wind down. And that'll do it as, looks like a penalty called on that play. So Reagan, Reagan gonna be sent out and it looks like it's gonna carry over. No, they're not gonna carry it over. They're adding 15 seconds back on the clock. And Chatham unable to take full advantage as Chazen's pass down the field ends up rolling out of bounds. And all that extra time that they received there uh, finally elapsed. So that'll wrap things up here in half number one. Two to nothing streaks lead and on the Cougars here in this quarterfinal round of the NJSIAA North Jersey Group Theory Tournament. And we'll be back after the half with some more action between these two squads. And we'll see if the streaks can hang on and advance to those semifinals right after this on more Sussex Sports. And TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda 
brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh! in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score! And that is a base hit, the run will score. And Freshman, pull a check, gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Uh -huh. Set and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti. Oh! In the end zone, it is caught. Charge. Good for the pass. Here's a shot. Right in front, score. And that is a base hit. The run will score. And freshman pull a check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Uh -huh. Set and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at this. Score! And that is a base hit. The run will score. And freshman pull a check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it. Uh -huh. Set and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti. Oh! In the end zone, it is caught. Charge. Good for the pass. Here's a shot. Right in front, score. And that is a base hit. The run will score. And freshman pull a check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Uh -huh.
All right, welcome back to Washington, New Jersey, right across the street from Warren Hills High School as we're bringing you the second half action of the NJSIAA North Jersey Group 3 quarterfinal rounds. We have finals for all the other quarterfinal matchups that took place today. North Hunterton won four to nothing against the eight-seeded Summit, so the one seed will move on and play on Friday. And it looks like on the five-seeded Lawrence, who were able to collect the second upset of this bracket, they beat Northern Highlands three to nothing. So certainly something that we weren't expecting to happen there. Randolph, though, taking care of business at home against Wayne Valley, three to nothing. And now this contest is, of course, a two to nothing affair with the streaks ahead. And, well, they're starting off just as well as they have in the first half, playing aggressively on offense. Now the stick comes flying out of the hand of Ellie Hilgendorf. And that'll at the very least slow things down as the ball now in control of Gabby Fama. Fama was the first goal scorer of the game, scored with just under 10 minutes left to go in the first quarter. There were no scoring, or there was no scoring, in quarter number two, so Chatham stepping up, but now we're gonna have to chip a couple in this time around, but especially against such a good defensive team here, like the streaks, or at least as they've shown today. We're gonna have to at least challenge them here as they're not taking their foot off the gas pedal. We just have to try and keep up with them. As now Moreno's got it. You know, we're seeing some cuts over from that sideline instead of lifted pass, and it's batted down by Chazen. But again, the Cougars just can't get it out of there. An issue this entire game, just allowing the streaks to enter the zone and really just set up camp and hang out there for a while. And it's been a busy day for Kelly Burnett, who's keeping her squad in this game, but by a thread here. There's been a lot of shots coming her direction. So now handled by Reagan. Yeah, she taps it up top. And there's Hoffman. They get a cut from Reagan as Hoffman backs up, resets the offense. She has plenty of players in front. And this one is blocked away. And another corner coming up for Warren Hill. So despite their offensive output in today's game, scoring two in the first half, none of them have come off of these corner plays. And you imagine that, you know, they'll get at least one of these to come through with the, just the sheer amount of opportunities they've had in this position. Again, running it through Salome. And to the top shot is cranked and blocked by Burnich. Burnett's with another save in today's game. Those pads have been working hard off the legs. She's had quite a few kick saves in this contest and again, just keeping it a two goal deficit for her Cougars. And now another wild pass from Chatham. Out of bounds by Emmy Chazen. And of course, we'd like to thank Warren Hills Athletic Director Mike Jones for making this broadcast possible here on more Sussex Sports as we bring you this quarterfinal state tournament action here from Washington. As this has popped up again in front of Burnage. A lot of dangerous plays in front of the netminder in orange as well, they'll grab the masks yet again. And the lights are on here at Warren Hills. We had a beautiful sunset cascading over the left side of the hills earlier in today's game with that soft Purple and orange hue coming through, providing a great backdrop for the first half. And now we have the dim twilight here as another shot. And this one off of the foot and the pads of Burnage. So challenging the post that time, but Burnage able to shuffle in front. And Chatham with an opportunity to at least work the ball over to the other end of the field. Here's junior Sarah Lapis. And her squad able to escort it through. Again, Chatham in the dark blue today, and over in the white are the blue streaks. Now a bit of a nutmeg pass that time. Swept over towards the middle, but Hoffman taking control yet again as she works it over to the 35. Now that pass ricocheting off of a Cougar's foot, and that was Katie McManus. And they'll stop it there, and they'll take the ball around the 35. Now a big blast by Hoffman rattles through and no one there to stop it. So that's going to run out of bounds. Actually just missing a lacrosse net that's set up over there. 
and roll almost into the, you know, and if there's no fence there, that ball is going into that concession stand. And again, just like what's been happening all game long, Chatham tried to advance it, and it's blocked by a streak. That's now it's scooped up by Desai. Majority of this game in the second half being played over on the right side. And as Warren Hill is doing a great job shutting down any sort of transition offense from the Cougars and again just keeping the ball in their zone. They're playing offense or rather defense through offense at this point. Just keeping the pressure on the other end. As Aldo grab it around the 20 and Salome is trying to get in there and we'll see another corner. And it's looking at me like Chatham playing without senior Grace Kneebone. We're seeing her over on the sideline. That's a big loss for them. She's such a huge part of this team. And you, know, you always hate to see injuries towards the end of the year. That's what you want your upperclassmen to really shine through. As that corner pass goes wide, it's going to stay in bounds, though. So the streaks will have an opportunity to at least make something happen as they send it inside the shooting arc. And now blasted out of there by Chazen. As Chatham escaped, yet another tough defensive push that time. Now back over towards midfield. And touched up by DiBiase. And that's going to end up out of bounds. And back over to for Maddie Moreno. Said her name a lot today. She's worked well on defense. She's almost pushed up as a midfielder in a lot of cases. As now she steals that one right away from Holberton. Attempting to advance and taken away. Here's Holberton back with it. She tries to split the defenders, and it does get under the stick of Haley Hoffman. As Chatham able to send it ahead. So here come the Cougars. As this will ring through from Hilgendorf and roll out of bounds. Not quite sure who she was looking for that time. Perhaps Liza Holberton, who was racing up that sideline, but a little too wide, and they are at the very least able to keep it in the zone. So now Holberton with it as we have a bouncing ball working through over towards the middle and it's kicked out of there by White. A couple of young netminders for this team, White and Kozelnik, a sophomore and freshman respectively, so lots to look forward to defensively for the future of this squad. And now with about 7.30 left to go, a little bit less. We are halfway through quarter number three. Not a lot of action. Last goal we saw was with 1.40 left in the first quarter. And it's been nothing, nothing since then. And off the high pass, Chatham able to scoop it up. It's McManus. McManus batting it ahead, and that's going to roll out of bounds. And go back by way of the streaks. At least that's what it's looking like right now. Well, they, though, by the way it's set up, it looks like Chatham's going to take it over from that 25-yard line. So blast it over towards the numbers on the top side and touched up by Sophia Claps. And now we'll see a corner coming up for the Cougars. They haven't had many of these opportunities in today's game. And against Sparta last week, they were able to score a goal off this set play. So let's see if they can cut the deficit in half right here with just under 6.30 left in quarter number three. Rifle it through the top. Attempting a setup and a whiff on the shot that time for McManus. And it's immediately taken out by the streaks. So, the streaks will have it over on the other side. After a nice defensive play, they're able to race in from outside of the, or rather from inside of the goal and put a stop to McManus, who would have had a clean shot, but off balance, just completely missing the ball there. And now allowing the streaks again to work in transition. There's the freshman again, pushing it up over on the far sideline. And Chatham collapsing on top, attempting to get it to midfield, but there's Desai at it again. Desai looking good, and another one of these back players on defense that have really been the spine of this squad. They're able to run everything through that stout defense. 
And now after a nice long run by Holburton, again, Warren Hills just shaking that one off. Not taking that as too much of a threat as here comes Summit, Summit. Pass to the middle and right under the stick of Gabby Fama. So taken away yet again by the Cougars. We've had more possession in this third quarter than we've seen at any other point in this game, but still have not been able to challenge Sydney White over there in net. She has not been very busy today. Now under five minutes to go, and the offense continuing to look a bit lethargic from Caitlin Layden's squad to try to light a fire under them during halftime. And it has looked better. The passing's been a lot cleaner. Their defense has stepped up and been able to get in the way of a lot of Warren Hills' passing. They've shut them down on those corners so far here in quarter number three. But, you know, this game about scoring goals, and they're not even getting shots in that direction. Now Chatham trying to collect it over towards the middle. And Haley Hoffman going to help that puck, or rather that ball escape the zone. Oh, I was going to say puck at least once when I hear hockey. No matter how many field hockey games I do, I'll just say it from time to time. Sometimes I'll give like, I'll say inning in a hockey game too. Now you do so many games in so many different sports, they start to bleed together a little bit, but this is certainly a special game out here in this quarterfinal round. The winner will take on Randolph. This is a big time shot wrapped around and Sarah Salome will score in that back corner. My goodness, there's a ton of velocity on that one as Salome sends one home, her 17th goal of the season. Notches that one in with 3.30 left to go in quarter number three. And Warren Hills with a comfortable three goal lead headed towards the latter part of this third quarter. Well, it took almost a half hour, but we see another one coming in here. As a huge play coming through for Warren Hills. Every game today has been a shutout. North 104-0 on Summit, Lawrence 3-0 on Northern Highlands, and Randolph 3-0 against Wayne Valley. So here's Desai. Racing it ahead, taking it all by herself. The freshman getting her way through the entire uh, defense of Chatham, and well, Salome had another nice opportunity there. But this time the Chatham defense able to collapse on top and put a stop there for the time being, keep it three nothing. And now Chatham really need to try to score. They've been, I mean, that's been their, their onus from the beginning. But they gotta shift it into a second gear here. It's crunch time. As a ticket to the semifinals, slipping away from them, down by three, with under three minutes to go here in the third quarter. And Desai again, just getting in the way on that top end as Chatham working it towards that goal line. Still inside the shooting area, and it's pushed out by Holly Ort. So slowing the Cougars down as Claps going to take it from out of bounds. Claps to McManus. McManus splitting the defenders. And we'll have that roll ahead. And she bats it towards the middle. Corner coming up for Chatham. Haven't been able to score in these situations in today's game. They're going to have to get a quick shot off. Three nothing. Warren Hills leading here at home. Warren Hills nine and three on the season on their home turf. And 5-2-1 and one on the road. Here comes the shot. Kick saved by White. Picked back up and now booted out of there by Haley Hoffman, the midfielder. We'll see another corner, but White with her first real save of the day. She might have one already, but that was the toughest shot that she's faced so far from Chatham. Now back towards the top. Wind up another shot and deflected away. A good stop by Desai, who was playing on the opposite side of the field that we're used to seeing her and helping her netminder out and maintaining this shutout. This is now batted out of bounds. The last time Warren Hill shut out an opponent. We have to go back to the semifinal round of the 100 and Warren Sussex tournament 
back on October 9th where they won one to nothing against Vernon in a tightly contested game. So we actually have one county champion going up against a county semifinalist. And so far the semifinalist is actually taking control here up three nothing in the waning seconds now of quarter number three. But Chatham putting the pressure on, trying to make something happen. Looking for some instant offense in front of the net. They have been able to get some shots off on Sydney White, the sophomore netminder. But ultimately nothing doing as now a short pass intercepted by Chatham. They're trying to keep it here and before it can be taken the other way by Hoffman. Time expires in quarter number three and we only have 15 minutes left to go in this one. Goal scored by Sarah Salome, her 17th of the year. As now Warren Hills will take a three to nothing lead into the final quarter of this quarter final round here on more Sussex Sports. We'll be back for the exciting conclusion right after this. And TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti oh! from the end zone. It is caught. Charge. Look for the pass. Here's a shot. Right in front. Score. And that is a base hit. The run will score. And freshman pull a check. Gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it. Ah! and T.J. Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open ice. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti oh! from the end zone. It is caught. Charge. Look for the pass. Here's a shot. Right in front. Score. All right, let's do it here in quarter number four at Warren Hills High School. The Blue Streaks with one of my favorite names in the entire state leading three to nothing on the Chatham Cougars. It's been tough going for Chatham in today's contest. Not much has happened for them. Very few shots on goal. They have stepped it up over in quarter number three, but now have 15 minutes, so at least try to tie this one up. As they're seeing their time in the state tournament slip away before their very eyes. So now handled by Ort. She's been a defensive force in today's game. As the Blue Streaks, as well as they've done on offense, with this three nothing lead, it's been that defense that hasn't let anything happen for Chatham. And Chatham, a good offensive team, 43 goals on the season. And that coming in 18 games. So they score about 2.4 goals per contest. That's nothing to sneeze at, but to be held to nothing is certainly an accomplishment for a team that has not been shut out since October 14th against Booton. They lost that one one nothing. And they also have a six game winning streak at risk of being snapped here. So here's an opportunity coming up for the Cougars as the Caesar working her way through. And Moreno attempting to poke it away. She's got it and gets it out of there before any more trouble can ensue. So they get it over to DiBiase. DiBiase's attempt to pass again, taken away by Moreno. Moreno cycling around, here's DiBiase. Chips it forward and it's gonna roll out of bounds over to the right of Sydney White. So Chatham looking good offensively, but again, not able to get those shots on the lime green wearing netminder. So now sent ahead, Haley Hoffman's looked good in the midfield today. And one of the main vessels of this offense is they just punch it through to the other side and that'll roll out, so the Cougars will get it. 
albeit back way deep in their own territory. Chilly night here. I, re I really feel for Nick Barry, man. Our camera operator, he's up there. I don't think he wore gloves. It's 43 degrees. Yeah, it really just dropped down here. We were having 70 degree days like what last week? And now we're pushing like 30 or somewhere in the 30s at the very least. I also got a feel for these players out there on the field. Of course, though, their bodies are being kept warm by the roaring fire of intensity of competition out here in this state tournament. And, you know, the running around. That, that'll also do it. Coming up on 12 minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. And a corner coming up for Warren Hills. This could end up being the final nail in the coffin in this game early on here in the final frame if they can indeed drive one home here. And as usual, being run through Salome. Salome towards the top now, shot from the middle and Summit goes just wide over on the right. But another clean set play from this streak squad as they continue to play defense through their offense. Now that one charged up, but stopped by Summit. Summit taps it ahead. And is able to find Sione. Sione racing over towards the corner and that's gonna exit the boundary is in. Here come Chatham over from the right to your left. Oh, apparently there's a teacher here. That's when you usually hear that student section starting to <laughs> bark out somebody's name. As now this one's bulleted over towards midfield. And picked up by the number five for Chatham, Brooke DiBiase. And she'll have to rifle it back as they'll take it through with Chazen. Jason from just outside her opposition's attacking end. Pushed forward, Chatham. All they can do is send it over towards the 50 before it's taken away by Moreno. Now working it around that sideline was Pulowski, and she's got a goal in today's game, but knocking it out. Now here comes Chatham, angled crowds with it. She's got one defender to beat, looking to get around Ort, works it over to her left side. Still not inside the arc, Ort, Cutting her off and takes the ball away. Another nice defensive play by the veteran back on this Blue Streaks team. Now taking it at the 15-yard line. Another thing the Streaks can do here, just milk down that clock. Chatham have not really shown too many signs of life offensively in this game. So if you can just hang on, play a little keep away, you'll see those 10 minutes melt right down. And the winner of this contest will take on the number three seeded Randolph. That'll be at Friday. And the location of that game is yet to be determined. If the Shrieks hang on to this three goal lead, it will be here. And if Chatham make a comeback, that'll be over at Randolph High School. And then of course the other semifinal matchup is set. It'll be at North Hunterdon as the number one seed on the North Jersey Group Three bracket. will take on Lawrence High School. And Lawrence will be on the road for their second straight game after beating down Cranford eight to one. That was the largest, or rather the second largest deficit of the first round. The largest one coming between North Hunterton and West Windsor, Plainsboro North. That was 16 to nothing. As in this tournament, North Hunterton have outscored their opponents 20 to nothing in the two games. So here come the streaks. They'll start it off with Desai here after the stoppage in play. As the Cougars trying to inject some energy into themselves as they sent one over towards the end. Picks up by Claps and rolls off the top of her stick and Desai will grab it again from out of bounds. And right here on Morris Sussex Sports, it's playoff time here. We've got a lot of football action coming up for you on Friday. I believe we have five state tournament games, so You'll want to stay tuned for all of those and check them out on Friday. And if you haven't already, if you like what you see, consider smashing that like button and of course, hit that subscribe. I know it sounds like a YouTuber, like, comment, subscribe, but it really does help us out here. And of course, who wouldn't want to get notified of all this spectacular high school sports action? Especially in a good game like this, three nothing streaks ahead. And now off that spin around from Salome. 
We'll see it again for Chatham. Now we'll give you that full lineup of games that we got for you in just a moment as a shot attempt goes over towards the middle, taken out, and scrum ensuing, and now corner coming up. For Chatham, well, the comeback can start here. They only have seven and a half minutes left to go in the fourth quarter, but if they score now, they could potentially pick up some momentum and make this a more competitive contest. Now up to the top. Chatham to the side. DiBiase with the shot, kicked away by White. And once again, the defense for Warren Hill is able to step up big time and maintain the shutout. They played shutout field hockey for the first 53 minutes of this contest. And I don't believe they intend to stop doing that anytime soon. Now Moreno sends it over to Hoffman, who was calling for the ball. Now has it snatched away. And it's taken by McManus. McManus keeping it in front of her as she was cut off. Working it ahead and Chatham coming up with another corner. So here's the slate of football games that we'll have for you on Friday on Morris Sussex Sports. At 6 o'clock, Riverdale will be taking on Vernon. That'll be at Riverdale. All these are state first round games. Mountain Lakes at Butler. Or rather, Butler at Mountain Lakes. And I'll actually be on the call for you there. It's at 7 o'clock. The remaining game's at 7 as well. As DiBiase with the shot. Blocks in front by our own teammate. Spins around. And Hilgendorf scores. Ellie Hilgendorf sending one in for Chatham. And they're not down yet. Hilgendorf with their sixth goal of the season. Coming with just under 6.15 left to go. And it's a 3-1 to one contest. So huge play by the senior, not wanting to see her season end just yet. And here's Chatham back at it again. As they rifle it through, they might have been able to figure something out and find a soft spot in the streaks defense. Playing with a lot more confidence in Mojo after that goal as they send it forward. DiBiase, nice little nutmeg pass, but able to pick it back up is Moreno. And now the streaks with it. Coming up on the far sideline. They continue to press as now falling down on the play was Gianna Sioni. And then of course the other football action will have for you. Newton playing Verona, Sparta Warren Hills, and West Morris against Summit. So those are the five that we'll have for you right here on Morris Sussex Sports on Friday night. But right now some state tournament action in the North Jersey Group 3 section. And it's not exactly what the Cougars were looking for, having to defend a corner with just five minutes left to go. Again, one last shout out to Mike Jones, the athletic director at Warren Hills. A big thank you to him for helping make this broadcast possible and be able to bring you all this exciting playoff action here on Morris Sussex Sports. As they've added towards the middle, looking for Summit. Trying to find an opening in the defense. Instead, it's poked away. And that's Garrett giving her team possession yet again. And now Chazen sending it forward. And nothing doing as it'll be taken all the way up by the streaks who again have an opportunity to go up by three. And this one rolls off the back of the stick and sent back over to Moreno. Moreno, bit of a slow roller over towards the arc, picked up by DiBiase. And she tries a quick touch pass over to Angle Kraut, but maybe a little too much touch on it as Moreno is able to cut it off. Now Hilgendorf. The game's only scorer for the Cougars. Three different scorers for the streaks, though. With Fama, Salome, and Pulaski. Now only four minutes left to go. As the streaks are edging closer and closer to punching their ticket in the semifinal round and hosting Randolph. But first, they'll have to stop Brooke DiBiase. Coming on out there, waiting for her teammates to follow. Chip pass ahead over towards the middle. Now cutting in was Schiacciano. But unable to drill one home as instead that went over towards that corner boundary. But they've still got it here. Now that pass from out of bounds was taken away. Just over three minutes to go now. McManus 
Trying to put some pressure on. Gets it inside the arc, slipping down. Is to say, and now another shot and White able to sprawl out and make the stop. And keeps this a two goal lead for the streaks as they take it in transition. Long pass towards midfield. And stopped by McManus, but they'll keep possession going the streaks way. Ooh, no, they won't. So now we see the officiating crew pointing in the opposite direction. Long pass, looking for DiBiase. And they can't find her. As yet again, we'll see it taken the other way by the white jerseys. Pulowski, the game's first goal scorer, gets knotted up over on the end. And she leaves it behind her for Reagan. Reagan working towards that baseline. Now stolen away by Chatham. Chatham have to get it out of the zone here. There's just over two minutes left to go. And they can't spend it pressed on their own side. But again, intercepted by Moreno. And despite the three different goal scorers, I think today's player of the game has got to be Maddie Moreno. She's been so good on defense all game long, even pressing up there where her team's on offense, keeping those possessions alive. And just like that, at least slowing down the Cougars every time that they try to work it over towards her end of the field. Now there's Moreno again snatching it away. She's got it, but it looks like they might give it back to Anglekraut. And that's exactly what's going to happen here. It looks like we might see substitution coming in as Kneebone and Maskamau getting ready to take the field here with the final minute or so left to go. 123 left. Chatham still have it. Down by two, but can make it a more interesting contest here. Sending it towards the middle of the field. They're still progressing it forward. Rifling it ahead, and it's blocked by who but, but Maddie Moreno, who's been a thorn in Chatham's side all game long, as the Cougars will get a corner here with just over a minute left to go. And they're going to have to set up quickly. Looking for that quick shot. Now under 50 seconds left. It looks like they're ready to go. Chazen to DiBiase. DiBiase winds up, takes a big shot, and it's kicked away. And that may very well be the Cougars' last opportunity in this contest. So Chatham will have it back on that yellow line. McManus. Over to the end. Attempting to center it, it's taken away and rifled out of there. Back up top, they're still pushing it in though, Chatamar. Just over, over 10 seconds left to go, now under 10. Working it over towards the end, over on the 30. Another shuffle inside and it looks like that'll end it as they roll that one ahead. The Blue Streaks with a great game this time around. As Warren Hills will advance to the semifinals, a great effort by both sides, but ultimately at the end, Warren Hills, the home squad in the number two seed, will host Randolph over on Friday as the Cougars are knocked out of this NJSIAA North Jersey Group 3 quarterfinal matchup. They make it interesting at the end, chipping in a goal in the fourth quarter, but coming up too short, too little, too late. As it is gonna be the streaks bolting themselves ahead with an opportunity to get to that final round. They'll have to get around Randolph though, who shut out their opponent today in Wayne Valley. And we'll see them over on Friday. A great matchup between these two squads. Goals scored by Jess Pawlowski, Riley Reagan, and Sarah Salome for Warren Hills and over for Chatham. Goal scored by Ellie Higgendorf with 6.15 left in the fourth quarter. That'll wrap things up here from Washington, New Jersey, Warren Hills High School. Again, we have a full slate of football games coming up for you over on Friday, so be sure to check those out. One at six o'clock and four at seven o'clock right here on Morris Sussex Sports. Big shout out to Mike Jones, our athletic director, and of course, to our entire crew making this broadcast possible. Nick Barry, whose fingers might be blue, but did a spectacular job. You couldn't tell that his hands were probably numb with his camera work. We have Jake Gallagher, our producer, Matt Casey, our line producer, our associate producer, Caitlin Langan, and of course, George Muha, our executive producer. My name is Zach Smolin. Final score for you here, Warren Hills three and Chatham one, as Warren Hills, the two seed, will be headed off 
to that semifinal round against the three-seeded Randolph. They'll take that at home on Friday. From all of us here at Morris Sussex Sports, have a great rest of your evening. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, stay frosty. Take it easy. Have a great rest of your evening.